Hello, and uh, welcome to a video tutorial about two ways to synchronize Super Collider with other audio software. Um, this is a, a special topic of interest for me. I've spent a lot of time on it with, um, with the Ableton Link thing. I also um, wrote MIDI sync clock some years ago in one of my quarks. Uh, so what I would like to do is um, just start by showing how they work. If you don't know what Ableton Link is, um, Ableton released an open source library to synchronize musical timelines over a network. So um, there are no MIDI or USB cables involved. You can just get computers, uh, uh, mobile devices on the same Wi-Fi network, and if the software supports Link, then they can all play in the same tempo, uh, coordinated. Um, one thing that is different about Link is that there is no concept of a leader or follower. All of the peers are on the same level. Anyone can change the tempo at any time. This is also good for reliability because in performances, you know, computers crash. If you have a traditional leader follower uh, setup, if the leader crashes, everything's done. You're finished. Um, but with Link, anybody can drop out at any time. The other peers will maintain the timeline and you can just come back in. Um, freely. A uh, common question, do you have to be using Ableton Live in order to use Link? And the answer is no. Ableton was very smart about decoupling this sync method from one particular piece of software. Um, so you can use it with all Super Collider things. Um, in this demo, I will be using uh, Super Collider, Pure Data, and VCV Rack. Um, live is not in the picture for this one, um, but it does integrate nicely with, with live. And I, I guess I'll also introduce MIDI sync clock again. This is a class that belongs to my DDW MIDI quark, which you can install through the quarks system. Um, I don't think it's a very good way to do sync. Um, people ask about it on the mailing list or on the forum. So I also thought in this video, it would be good to show how to use it and also why you should avoid using it if you can at all avoid it. So um, let's, let's, uh, let's dive into the demos. Um, Super Collider uses a class called Link Clock to uh, to synchronize, you know, and if you're using Super Collider, you must be using Tempo Clock. Um, if you know how to use Tempo Clock, you know like 99.9% .9 of how to use Link Clock. Um, both of them work almost identically. The difference is that Link Clock uses a shared time base in order to relate beats to seconds. I'm... Um, but the basic usage, once, once you are hooked up to the network, everything else is the same. Before you, you use it, um, you should be on the network before you open Super Collider. You also need to make sure that you can access port 20808. If you're using a firewall, make sure to open that port. Um, this needs to be available during Super Collider startup. Um, Super Collider cannot recover from this. You will have to restart the interpreter. Um, the other thing is to set latency on the clock. This is an unusual thing for link clock. Tempo clock doesn't have to do this, um, but you need this in order to coordinate with other peers. So let's uh, let's get a metronome going now. This metronome is already running, um, and in fact, there is already a link session going, but we are not connected to it. So let me connect to it. Okay, and there's a hiccup, right? So that is where um, the the you know link is coordinating these uh, these time bases. Um, all right, now I'm actually going to start with v VCV rack. 
um, we will talk about latency compensation later. Some link peers will need to tune this by hand. Um, they don't do it automatically. Super Collider does it automatically. Um, but let's see what happens when the latency is, is not tuned properly. Let me turn on a, uh, a, a downbeat. And why am I not hearing that? I think, oh, I should open the mixer, right? Now, it turns out this is very close um, already, but you might hear sometimes. Now, if, apologies for the edit, I had to restart rack just there for a second. Um, if the latency is not tuned correctly, you would get See, the synth is a little bit late, so let's um, try to get it so that it sounds just right. Okay, um, I hope you don't have to do this in a set, but make sure you build in time for your, uh, for your setup. Um, now, let's make a, a, a link clock. This um, here, I'm also using this uh, GUI comes from one of my, um, yeah, let me turn that down. Um, this GUI comes from one of my quarks, so you might not have it. It's from the uh, uh, D -D -W GUI enhancements quark. Um, now you watch that the, the starting time of the clock kind of also paused for a second to get in time. Um, so that is, uh, that is Link getting in time with itself. Um, okay, let me make a little drum beat. Um, here I am using uh, my Chucklib live code pattern language. Um, and I think I don't need to do that, but I'll do that anyway. Um, okay. <laughs> so, and you see that this like effortlessly uh, joins the bar line. This is, this is why Link is so great. I've done almost nothing and it just picks it up. All right, let's make the sequence more interesting. The metronome is on. Oops. <laughs> okay, 16 was about right. Um, tempo. So to consider what you what you just saw right there. So to consider what you just saw right there. Um, that so it was three separate pieces of software all doing a shared uh, slowdown and speed up. Um, you know this is fr from an engineering perspective. This is quite hard to do, and it's actually very easy to execute. With Link, so so Link is I'm I'm a big fan. I really like it a lot. Um, okay, now um, because I also wanted to talk about uh, MIDI sync. With MIDI sync clock, you need to start it up in a very specific way. Um, so I think this is probably the cause of most of the problems that are reported. So first, the device should be connected. MIDI should be connected, but not running yet. Um, so again, I'm going to use use pure data for this. Um, actually, I should have that, the metronome running. Um, initialize MIDI. 
Um, I have already done that in this session. Um, so normally you would need to run this line right now. I won't because it's already set up. Um, the device needs to be connected to Super Collider's input port zero. So you will do MIDI in dot connect and then something <clears throat> to get the device index. Um, here I'm going to actually search the MIDI client dot sources array in order to find pure data. So if I just run that, now we're connected. Then you need to get a MIDI sync clock ready to listen. So, and that's this. Um, just run MIDI sync clock dot init. Finally, start your start the device running. So on a drum machine, you would push the start button. Um, now I start this. Actually, this is now uh, this link clock is now irrelevant, so we can get rid of it. Um, so at this point, um, it does have some awareness of tempo, and you can see that the tempo is not quite exact. I think that may be a pure data issue. Um, let's listen to the that. Now this. Um, this is not really part of MIDI sync. I'm just going to take those drums and switch them to the new clock. Um, if you set up the clock first, you won't have to worry about that. Um, now, that's very late. Um, it has to do with server latency. Let's get rid of server latency. Okay, and it is playing, and I can Okay, and it is picking up uh, the tempo from that, so I'm going to turn this off uh, Kill that So now that seems very convincing um, MIDI sync clock actually has some latency issues with hardware. So at the end of the talk, we will go into why. So, uh, but first let's, you know, let's cover some, some Ableton link, uh, concepts. This is important to understand if something goes wrong and you need to troubleshoot. Um, so I think, you know, we all understand what it means for beats to be together. The beats occur at the same time. This also implies that tempo is connected. Um, Ableton adds a concept of, of quantum, which is essentially the meter um, and the ideal use case for Ableton link is uh, is sort of a group playing uh, playing techno or playing playing dance music where the meter is consistent. And the tempo is fairly consistent. Um, Link will work really beautifully in those uh, cases. Um, it's possible to have clients with a different quantum, and then you may get unexpected results. Phase. Phase is the position within the bar. Um, Ableton Link does not synchronize beat numbers. So if you're running Ableton Live and it, it is at beat 200, um, Super Collider may not be at beat 200, but it should be at the same point within the bar. So um, if beat 200 is bar line, Super Collider should also be on a bar line. As you noticed, when I created the link clock, it didn't immediately start counting 0, 1, 2. It was like 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? This is one thing to be aware of. I've seen many code examples where somebody creates a tempo clock and they immediately start scheduling on it. This is not a good idea with link clock because you don't know exactly which beat it will start on. Okay. If one of the peers has been running for a while, you know, it may be counting along uh, beats as shown. Um, that would correspond to a phase values like this, assuming that quantum is four. If we, if peer B, a new peer joins in, in the middle of a bar, then its first beat might be two, 
Right. Um, so you should always start a link clock and give it a little time to stabilize. It will stabilize very quickly, but don't do like a single block of code where you create a link clock and start running things on it. Latency. Um, all audio applications will sound a little bit later than they're calculating the audio. This is latency from the audio driver. Um, and it may not be the same between different machines. Um, Super Collider also has latency for uh, its open sound control messages. Let's look at the normal way that we use Super Collider. A, a tempo clock is running. And let's say we're going to have something. Um, something is scheduled to happen at beat 20. Right? So the tempo clock reaches beat 20 and it will it will run that thing. Um, now let's say that it is going to play uh, a synth or do something according to the server's latency. So sometime after the clock's idea of beat 20, you hear the sound. Um, so normal usage, everything is late. This is okay when Super Collider is the only time base, right? Everything is late, but everything is also consistent. Now, Ableton specifies that a beat on its timeline should be the moment when the sound comes out, right? Um, one reason for this is different computers, different sound cards have different, um, different latencies, Every computer is responsible for handling that independently. That's the reason why we need to have, uh, we need to set the latency on the clock. We set the messaging latency on the clock, All right? Let's take a look at that. So if we want this event is supposed to sound at beat 20, and we know that there is this much latency, then the language actually needs to wake that task up early, right? Um, and the, the latency setting does that automatically. Then the messaging latency pushes this to beat 20. Uh, what about audio driver latency? Well, our server automatically handles that because our server defines the timestamp this moment as the moment when the sound should come out. So this is really good for us working with Link, right? Um, and then the audio driver latency pushes the sound back a little bit and, uh, and we're right on time. Um, so you, ideally, you should find you set the link clock latency to match the server latency, and then you should be in in time with another peer that also handles the latency correctly. Tempo changes. So the you know another possible source of trouble is if you make very large tempo changes very often. Let's take an example first. Right? Uh, here we have 60 BPM. So beats and seconds are moving at the same speed. Uh, the black line is um, is links time value. Say that's beat 11, beat 12. The green line is super colliders clock value at the uh, at the at the black line, right? So if latency is 200 milliseconds, and seconds equals beats, then at the moment of Link's concept of beat 11, the super collider clock is actually at beat 11.2. Okay? Yeah, think about it, right? It, it's, th this is true. Um, <clears throat> now let's say that we change tempo, double the tempo at beat 12. So now, within this one second, 
we have two beats, two beats, two beats, and so on, right? Now, latency is still 200 milliseconds, but 200 milliseconds is now 0.4 beats, not 0.2 beats. So at the exact moment of the tempo change, now we just have to jump over this gap here instantaneously. Right. And this can cause all kinds of problems if you expect messages to be executing with a certain timing. Now the timing has changed. And, you know, I've, I've seen issues logged where uh, somebody said, I opened Ableton and Super Collider and I set up a link clock and I started changing the tempo really fast in Ableton and Super Collider went crazy. Um, that's kind of to be expected. Right. So if you really want this to work well, um, one is reduce the messaging latency. Set s.latency to a smaller value, maybe even as small as 50 milliseconds, 0 0.05. Um, and then set the clock latency to the same. That means that these, these gaps will be much shorter. The probability of having a problem will go down by a lot. Um, also, avoid extreme tempo changes, right? So my demo sounded very smooth because I was changing the tempo slowly, right? Slow tempo changes will probably work. Fast tempo changes, you may get a little glitch at uh, uh, here and there, okay? That's really about it for Link. Um, Again, as I said, it's it's very reliable. It's really, really cool to work with. Um, MIDI sync clock. Um, <laughs> just, just don't, right? Um, you know, MIDI clock messages don't have a concept of phase. This means you have to start it up very carefully. This also means you may not be able to recover if you crash in the middle of a set. Also, there's really not a good way to handle latency. You know, I, I've seen threads from people who say, you know, I want to try this to, to sync with hardware. I, I would really suggest looking at other mechanisms if, uh, if you need to sync with hardware. For example, there are some, uh, I, I know of at least one Eurorack module that implements link. Um, that would be a much better choice. MIDI clock, you get three kinds of clock messages. The catch with a clock message is that it doesn't tell you anything about what time it is. So the only way to know where you are in the bar is to count from a known position, to count from a downbeat. Um, an alternative to this may be MIDI timecode. Um, I, I am interested in synchronization, but I'm not that interested in MIDI. So um, I will leave that for someone else to, to implement. Just to review, again, you must start it up in this way. MIDI sync clock must be ready to receive input before you start the device. This is because clock messages don't tell you what time it is. So you have to do it this way. You may get error messages if the device does not send a start message. Um, I, I thought about taking that requirement out, but I think it actually helps you because if you don't have that, <clears throat> if you don't have that start message, how can you know for sure where you are in the bar, right? So to me, it's better to actually throw an error to say, hey, something's wrong, rather than just trying to, to, to do something wrong. And latency. Now, the demo that I did sounded really clean. Super Collider and Pure Data in very good sync. They're on the same machine. They're running through the same audio driver. So they're under the same driver latency. So PD sends a control message now, and its audio is a little bit late. 
Super Collider responds to that message now, and its audio is late by the same amount, so they sound together. Right? Um, if you're syncing with hardware, the latency may be very close to zero in the hardware, and your computer's latency will not be zero. So the computer is very likely to sound late, and there's not that much that we can do about that. My suggestions, if you have to use MIDI sync clock, is, um, of course, as I did in the demo, set latency to nil so that you get <clears throat> as fast as possible response. Second is tune the system to get the smallest possible latency that you can. If you can run at 64 samples in your hardware buffer, or even 32, if you can manage that, this would be highly recommended. It will, um, it will bring the synchronization much closer. Okay, and that's all. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, um, <clears throat> probably the best place to go is uh, the sesynth.org forum. I, I routinely read the forum and answer a lot of questions there. So uh, I would say this is the best place to ask. With that, thanks for listening and enjoy, uh, enjoy playing with Ableton because it's really a lot of fun. Okay, bye.